So in this Fallout 76 video, we're going to be covering 25 secrets and easter eggs that you might have missed. There will also be a bonus easter egg as well at the end. For those of you that make it to the end as like a thank you. So technically there's 26 secrets and easter eggs in this one video. Yeah, this took a very long time to compile all of this into one video. In this we cover secret power armor paint jobs, missable unique armor, and a missable unique weapon. We also cover plenty of easter eggs, as well as different secret unique ally dialogue that you can trigger, and more. Yeah, there is a lot that we go over in this one video. Feel free to use the timestamps available to help navigate through this. And consider leaving a like if you do find this video enjoyable. The support helps get the video out to more people. As always, that's totally up to you. Just leave a reminder here in the beginning. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into all of these. Target acquired. They say that vaults only accepted the best and the brightest of humanity for your sake. Let's hope that's not the case. Zing. Alright, so this first one I'll be kicking this off with is Good Old Insult Bot. In case you don't know, this bot's dialogue was written by Steve Massey, who is one of the developers for Fallout 76. It was said by him that the Insult Bot was inspired by the Zing Bot from the reality TV series Big Brother. At the end of the Insult Bot's dialogue, sometimes you can hear it say, Zing which is what the Zingbot says after saying a joke or insulting someone, as you can see here for an example. So yeah, without this TV series, we might not have ever seen Insult Bot in Fallout 76. Uh, the developer who actually added this into the game had mentioned that him and his wife would watch the TV series every year, and the Zing Bot helped inspire the Insult Bot. So yeah, pretty cool little fun fact about it. I gotta say, I love this robot that we can randomly find around. It's actually got me to genuinely laugh. You can randomly find it on the map in certain locations. Here's one location where you can discover it if you want to check this out for yourself in game. Target acquired. I considered attacking you on sight, but I don't think I could hurt you more than life already has. Zing. Anyway, something else that you might have missed with the Insult Bot is the Office TV series Easter egg with it as well. At the end of some of the bot's insults, it'll state Boom Roasted. This is what Michael Scott said to the other Office cast members after he got done insulting them. Check this out. Here's a couple examples of the bot saying it. Target acquired. You humans attack me because you can't take a joke. Fortunately, your combat ability is just as bad as your sense of humor. Boom. Roasted. Target acquired. The smartest thing about you is that pit boy on your arm. The dumbest thing is that you mainly use it as a nightlight. Boom. Roasted. Yeah, pretty neat to see an office Easter egg in Fallout. Meredith, you've slept with so many guys, you're starting to look like one. Boom. Roasted. Kevin, I can't decide between a fat joke and a dumb joke. Boom. Roasted. Creed, your teeth called, your breath stinks. Boom. Roasted. Alright, so this next one is an Indiana Jones Easter egg that you could have easily missed during the Mother of Invention quest that's a part of the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. During this, you'll have to remove a mysterious component eventually, and when you go to examine it, one of the options that you could choose to remove it is by quickly swapping it out with a heavy sack of dirt. That doesn't sound good. This is referencing an iconic scene that happened in the Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark movie. In the movie, Indiana Jones replaces the golden artifact that he takes with a heavy sack that he has, and when he does, chaos starts to break loose, just like in Fallout 76, except Indiana Jones wasn't getting attacked by robots. 
<laughs> Pretty sneaky little easter egg, especially how you can only come across this once per playthrough on your character. I know Bethesda is helping make an Indiana Jones game, so it's neat to see the developers incorporate an Indiana Jones easter egg into Fallout 76. Alright, so this next one's going to be a Skyrim easter egg that you might have not known about. If you head over to Big Ben Tunnel West and talk to the caravan member named Rudy Fernandez, he'll sometimes say this. Rudy has wares if you have caps. Yeah, what he just said there is actually a twist off of what a Khajiit merchant says in Skyrim. Check this out. Far, I have traveled to bring you these fine goods. Come and see what I offer. Khajiit has wares if you have coin. Pretty neat little easter egg that Bethesda decided to throw in with this guy. Anyway, so this next one's going to be another Skyrim easter egg that you can find over at Mount Blair Train Yard. Over here you can find a Dark Brotherhood easter egg up in this building. Just take these flight of stairs to get up inside of it. And on the desk in here you can find a picture frame with the Dark Brotherhood symbol on it. And right above the desk on the shelf you can find some blocks that spell out we. And below on the desk next to the picture frame you can find some blocks that spell out no. This is a reference to Skyrim when we joined the Dark Brotherhood. We had to take out Grelic the Kine for Aventus and once we did a little while afterwards a carrier will approach you and give you this mysterious note that states we know with the handprint on it. This mysterious note was from the Dark Brotherhood. So yeah pretty interesting to see this reference in Fallout 76. There's also another Dark Brotherhood reference over here next to Silva Homestead. As you can see it'll be located right around where I'm at on the map next to the location. Once over here you just want to drop down from this bridge and then head this way and this will lead over here to this corpse that was decapitated. You can find the skull from the body on this rock as well as a machete and most importantly the Dark Brotherhood hand symbol is on this rock too. So it seems like the Dark Brotherhood might have done this. It's like the Dark Brotherhood is a part of Fallout universe. This is pretty neat. Anyways, this next easter egg will be located over here at the Pioneer Scout Camp. This will be another Skyrim easter egg that you can find in Fallout 76. When you're doing the quest line to join the Pioneer Scouts over here, which you start this one by just going over to the Pioneer Scout Camp and talking with the robot scout leader. But yeah, when you are doing the quest line, eventually you'll have to take on some exams. And one of the exams that you can take is a medic exam. During this one, you can actually run across a question sometimes that states this. You're the on-duty medic at the archery range. Ricky goes out to retrieve his arrow during live fire and is shot through the knee. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of you already get this reference, but it goes on here. There's an incorrect answer that you can choose that says, advise Ricky to give up on adventuring. This is great. This whole thing here is a spinoff over one of Skyrim's most famous lines that the guards say. Check this out. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Yeah, pretty awesome of Bethesda to make this iconic line an easter egg in Fallout 76. After all, they did make Skyrim. But uh, yeah, keep in mind, while you are taking the medic exam, you won't always come across this question. It is a random one that you can get. You may not come across it at all when taking the exam. Either way, I highly recommend to do the Pioneer Scouts quest line if you haven't. Definitely a beneficial quest line to do. Alright, so this next one will be the last Skyrim Easter egg that I'll be showing you that's in Fallout 76. This one is located down by Vault 96. It'll be located right around here on the map. When you get over here, you'll find a tractor hauling a carriage with three bodies tied up inside of it, along with a Nuka Shine bottle in it too. So this is also a potential spot where you could wake up at after drinking Nuka Shine. This is an easter egg from Skyrim's opening scene where you wake up with three other people tied up. Check this out. You, you're finally awake. Yeah, that iconic scene. Cool Bethesda to add a little reference to it. Also, making it so we can randomly wake up here after drinking Nuka Shine makes this Easter egg even better. But yeah, that's all the Skyrim Easter eggs I'll be covering in this video. Let's go ahead and move on to the other secrets and Easter eggs you might have missed. Alright, so next up here I'm going to be showing you all how to get the Free Radicals Face Mask. This is a unique mask that you could easily miss 
during the Waywards quest line. And if you do miss out on it, you'll have to start a whole new character to have a chance at getting it again. It's a completely optional thing to get your hands on. And how you get it is by joining the Free Radicals crew during the Waywards quest line. Which, you start this quest line by going over to the Wayward and talking to Duchess, who is the bartender here. After you talk to her, you will trigger the Hunter for Hire quest. And within this quest, you're eventually going to have to load a broadcast tape into a radio tower. And once you do that, you'll then have to return to your camp. And this will begin the first step that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do in order to get this Free Radicals face mask. What you're gonna to wanna to do is try to join the Free Radicals crew when they do show up at your camp. As you can see here, you wanna choose this option. I'll share, but I want to join your crew. Now, where do I go to apply? If you choose this one, you'll come up with these dialogue options. I just went ahead and used the Charisma plus two one, which this one states, we've all been lied to. The treasure's not in Appalachia at all. It's in DC. And yeah, choosing this one made it so I stayed friendly with the Free Radicals and I didn't have to attack them. If you do attack them, you can just immediately quit out of the game and load back in. And it should revert your choices that you made against them if you do it immediately after choosing. The dialogue options. Anyways, carrying on, eventually you're going to have to get in the Free Radicals base. If you have luck four and higher, you can just simply fast travel to the Free Radicals base, which is located over here at the West Virginia Lumber Co. And yeah, once you're over here, you just head up to the intercom and use the luck four and higher option where you just guess the password to get in. Anyways, once you're in, you then just went ahead and talked to Roper, the leader of the Free Radicals, which he's in the building here. And when you're talking to him, you want to make sure that you tell him, I want to join your crew as well. Anyways, once you tell him you want to join your crew, you then want to say something else to him that's basically friendly with them. You could choose pretty much any of these dialogue options as long as you're not acting hostile to him. I just went with this option here. And then, yeah, I ended the conversation by saying, okay, I'll bring you Crane's treasure. So yeah, the Hunter for Hire quest that's within the Waywards quest line is extremely important. That's where you're going to be getting the first couple steps that you need to do in order to get this Free Radicals face mask. Now you're just going to have to progress a little further in this quest line. After you complete the Hunter for Hire quest, you will then get a quest called Strength in Numbers, which you'll have to complete that. And then after that one, you'll get a quest called the Elusive Crane, which this is the quest where you can receive the unique face mask. Eventually, there's going to come a part within the Elusive Crane quest where when you return to the Wayward, you're going to see Duchess and her crew all held at gunpoint by the Free Radicals. And when this predicament's happening, there are a couple dialogue options that you can choose, but I just went with this one here, which states, of course, boss, the place was pretty empty, but there was a weapon, which you do get a legendary weapon out of a machine during the Elusive Crane quest. Anyways, yeah, as you can see, after you choose that, option you'll get some more options here you can either show roper the weapon or you could say you know it's not really that great just go ahead and show roper the weapon and by doing that this will lead to these dialogue options here which depending on your stats you can choose different ones here to keep the weapon that you just got out of this quest or you can just tell roper to take it but i just chose the charisma for and higher one which states you want your crew to be taken seriously right that starts with looking the part you can't be seen with a weapon this unimpressive which this led to me being able to keep the weapon and receive the unique face mask as you can see at the top left of the screen reticles face mask added once again this is something unique that you can easily miss out of this quest line as you can see here's what it looks like looks awesome and not to mention, the Free Radicals are now friendly with you too, after choosing those options. Alright, so next thing that you might have missed is the unique cave diving suit. You can only get this in one location during a quest. And in case you don't know how to get this, you get this during the Brotherhood of Steel quest line, which you start over at Fort Atlas. That's where the Brotherhood of Steel is located at. Eventually, within the quest line, once you complete a few quests, uh, after the Brotherhood of Steel property rights quest, you will start the Supplying Demands quest, which this is the one where you have a chance at getting the cave diving suit. Keep in mind, you are going to have to be at least level 20 to start the Brotherhood of Steel quest line, and if you miss this during the quest, 
you are going to have to, unfortunately, make another character to get this. So definitely make sure you grab it. But yeah, during the Supply and Demands Brotherhood of Steel quest, you head over to Kerwood Mine, which inside here is where the cave diving suit is located at during, once again, this quest. You will find it within this box here, right before you have to dive into the water to progress further in the mine. So yeah, definitely don't forget to loot this box. Once again, this is a completely optional thing that you can get during the quest. You're still able to complete it without it. As you can see, here's what it looks like. It looks nice and it's actually beneficial too. It grants water breathing and immunity from water radiation and diseases. And to top it off, it has a thousand radiation resistance too. So yeah, it's a nice suit to get your hands on. So this next one I'll be covering will be the Smiling Man, also known as Injured Cold. This guy is a strange random encounter that you can find around Appalachia. Right around here on the map is one of the locations where you can spot him at sometimes. Here's what he says when you go and talk to him. Yesterday upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. Oh, how I wish he'd go away. Salutations. Do not be afraid. I do hope I have found you well. There's quite a bit of dialogue options to choose from. To start off here, let's just go ahead and say nice jacket, buddy. I am cold. You may call me Indrid. What are you called? So yeah, we'll get even more dialogue options to choose from. Let's go ahead and just choose the option that states, tell him your name. Of course it is. The pleasure is mine. So nice to see a smiling face. Now let's ask him, what do you want from me? Not from you. For you. I want only happiness for you. I have been away a long time. It appears that much has changed during my absence. I have such sights to see. Perhaps you can recommend a local peculiarity. I gotta say, this guy is one interesting character with loads of dialogue options to choose from. As you can see here, now there's even more we can talk to him about. Now let's go ahead and say this to him. You should try to find the Mothman. An enlightened idea. I shall do just that. You have my thanks for your time and company. Before I forget, I must go. I do hope to see you again. So yeah, that's some of the dialogue from him. As you can tell, the developers added loads of dialogue options to choose from with him. But yeah, and for those of you that are curious what happens if you go and try to kill this guy, well, here's what happens. It's actually pretty interesting. Smile. And the whole world smiles with you. He'll just vanish in smoke, very similar to how the Mothman vanishes. This guy is very mysterious. Also, it's good to know that the ally Stephen Scarberry, the one who worships the Mothman, has seen the Smiling Man around Appalachia too. Here's what he'll say about him. Not yet, but I did see something strange. A very friendly man. While his personality was cold, he could not shake his smile. I feel as though we were looking for similar things. Interesting enough, this guy is actually based off real life. He was sighted a couple times by people. As you can see, here's a drawing of apparently what he looked like. He was described as possibly being an alien or associated with the CIA. Some described him like a person from the Men in Black movie. People have speculated him to be connected with the Mothman. One of the second sightings of him was around the same area and time as the Mothman came about in West Virginia. A guy named Woodrow Derenberger described coming across the Smiling Man. He mentioned how the guy came up to him and said telepathically to him that his name was Injured Cold and he meant no harm. He told him he wanted to know more about the human race and apparently even visited Woodrow again too. Yeah, very strange and creepy. That's just a little bit about the story of the Smiling Man. I suggest looking into him sometime. Anyways, this next secret that you might have missed will be a part of the Wastelanders questline. You can discover a secret unique weapon during the Vault 79 heist with the Raiders. This is something that you could easily miss during this. It's completely optional to get. In order to get this, first off, to start the Wastelanders questline, you're going to have to be at least level 20. Once you hit level 20, you could tune in to the Overseer's broadcast within your radio tab on your Pip-Boy, or you can just head over to the Overseer's home because that's where you're going to have to go 
anyways you're gonna have to go over to her home and talk to her but yeah once you talk to her you will start the quest called new arrivals and this quest is the start of the quest line that leads you to do the vault 79 heist keep in mind there's plenty of other quests that you're going to have to complete before doing the heist but this is the start of it this quest will introduce you to the settlers and raiders it's good to know that you are able to do the settlers quest line as well as of course the raiders quest line however when it comes down to the quest where you're going to do the vault 79 heist if you want to get this secret unique weapon you can only get it while doing the heist with the raiders so yeah once you're doing the heist you'll eventually get to a part within vault 79 where Ra Ra will be outside of a door here and as long as you were friendly with Ra Ra during the raiders quest line she'll have an option at this part for you where she'll sneak through this vent and get into this room and open up the door for you so you'll have access to this room and inside this place you can find the unique weapon called the slug buster and this weapon is pretty good especially against armored enemies like robots because first off it's a plasma weapon which does great against armored enemies and on top of that it has an effect that ignores 50 percent of your target's armor so it's like doubling up on the effect of penetrating armor and also the other effects on this are vats critical shots do 50 percent more damage which is a great effect to have especially if you're like a sneak build and it has 90 percent reduced weight so yeah as you can see here's a little bit of it in action it's not a bad weapon it definitely has potential to be a great one depending on what kind of build you have all right so next up here i'm going to be showing you how to get the incredible looking nuka cola power armor paint as you can see here's what it looks like it looks phenomenal however keep in mind though you can only equip this paint to t51b power armor so yeah that's good to know Anyways, let's go ahead and get into how to get this. There will be quite a bit of steps. First things first, you're going to have to head over to Pylon V13, which is located over here in the Cranberry Bog. Once over here, you can find a duffel bag next to a corpse, and within this duffel bag, you can find a toolbox key. So yeah, once you got the toolbox key, you'll then want to head over to Watoga Shopping Plaza. Once over here, just head over to the outskirts of the Watoga Shopping Plaza, and over here you can find a locked toolbox. Go ahead and use the toolbox key to unlock this, and within this toolbox you can find the key to Clara's box. And once you got that, just head over to where I'm exactly located at on the map around Sutton. Over here you can find Clara's box within this doghouse. Go ahead and unlock Clara's box, and within this you'll find the Nuka Cola locker key. So go ahead and grab that. And once you got that, you'll have to head over to the Nuka Cola plant, which is located right here on the map. And yeah, you'll have to head on inside of it. And within here, it's pretty easy to find. Just take the route that I take. You have to head up these flight of stairs over here and go through this door. And then you'll find a locked door that you'll have to unlock, which by the way, there will be some enemies around in this Nuka Cola plant. So keep that in mind. You'll have to take out a few enemies. But yeah, behind this locked door, you'll just have to head this way, and over here, you can find the locker that you can use the Nuka-Cola locker key on. And within this, you'll find the TNT Dome Key 3, which is the last thing that you'll need in order to get this Nuka-Cola paint. Once you got the TNT Dome Key 3, you'll just have to head over to the Black Mountain Ordnance Works, which is located right here on the map, and you'll have to head exactly where I'm located at over here. So yeah, just head to where I'm at on the map, over here you can find TNT Dome 3 right off the street. So just go ahead and use the key that you just got from the Nuka Cola locker. And within here you can find a Nuka Cola power armor paint. So yeah, that's how you get it. There's quite a bit of steps I know, but it's definitely something to collect in the game I'd say. Alright, so since I just showed you how to get the Nuka Cola power armor paint plan, now I'm going to be showing you all how to get the Nuka Cola Quantum power armor paint plan. Which keep in mind this can only be used with the X01 power armor but yeah this paint job looks nice and it's incredibly secretive too just like the nuka cola power armor paint plan was it takes quite a bit of steps to get it so first things first in order to get this power armor paint plan you're gonna have to head on over inside the nuka cola plant which is once again located right here on the map once over here you just want to head on over here into the restroom it will be locked but it's only a level zero locked door so as long as you got bobby pins you'll be able to open this up Inside this restroom, you just want to look in the stall, and you can find the first item that you'll need to get this Nuka Cola Quantum Power Armor Paint Plan right here on the ground. As you can see, the item is Paired Key Card 1. So the next thing you're going to need is Paired Key Card 2, which that's located all the way over at Tanagra Town 
in the Maya region, which is located right here on the map. Once over here, you're going to have to climb to the top of this place, which in case you don't know how to get to the top, we'll go ahead and play the footage getting all the way up there. So yeah, once you're up here, you're going to have to enter inside this building here and jump across the little gap inside here. And you'll be able to find the second key card that you'll need over here. It'll be located underneath this junk item if there are some junk items over here for you. As you see, it's paired key card 2. So once you got this, now you want to head on over to the crashed plane in the Maya region, which is located right here. Once over here, you just want to get the Nuka-Cola marketing access code from the suitcase underneath the crashed plane, as you can see. So yeah, once you have that, now you want to head on over to Ingram Mansion, which is located right here on the map. And over here, there may be some enemies to take out, but what you want to do is head to the other side of the building and go through these busted out windows. Inside here, you can find a terminal that will generate a one-time key code. So go ahead and just take a picture or write this code down because you are going to be needing to input it further in the future. Your code will be totally different than mine. But yeah, anyways, once you got the code, now you want to head over to the Overlook Cabin, which is located right here next to Nougat. And once over here, you just want to make your way downstairs of the Overlook Cabin. Once again, there may be some enemies for you to take on here, but nothing too difficult to take on. So yeah, once down here, you're going to want to use the two key cards that you got over here on these key card readers that are against the wall. You can find one of them right here, and you can find the one that requires the second paired key card right here. And once you use these, it will open up a secret wall door down here. So yeah, just head on over inside this place here. And in here, you can input the one-time generated key code that you got over at Ingram Mansion. Once you enter it, that'll open up another secret wall door, which I gotta say, these secret wall doors are awesome. But yeah, this other secret wall door that opened down here will be located right over here. And within here, you can find TNT Dome Key 7, which is what you need to get the Nuka-Cola Quantum Power Armor paint. And keep in mind, if any of these items are not here for you, that means someone in the server got it before you did. All you'll have to do is just hop servers, and eventually the item will be there. But yeah, now since you got the dome key, you just want to head on over to the Black Mountain Ordnance Works, and TNT Dome 7 will be located right here on the map. Just head exactly where I'm at on the map over here, and yeah, once you're over here, you just want to head off the street, and it'll be located behind these rocks. It'll be pretty camouflaged over here. But yeah, anyways, as you can see inside here, you can find the Nuka-Cola Quantum Power Armor Paint right over here on the desk. And this paint job looks awesome. Anyways, these next few secrets will be over some hidden dialogue that you might have missed with the allies. Starting off with Daphne's secret dialogue. As long as you are wearing the Mistress of Mystery outfit, when you go and talk to her, you'll be able to choose the secret dialogue option. To find it, all you have to do is choose the dialogue option that states, I have some hero business I'd like to discuss. And then once you choose this one, as you can see, this dialogue option will become available. It states, if it isn't the inspector, the Mistress of Mystery greets you. Once again, you can only choose this dialogue option while you are wearing the Mistress of Mystery outfit. As you can see here, for an example, real quick, I'm now not wearing the outfit, and I don't have the option now to choose. But yeah, now anyways, here's some things that she'll say when you choose this unique option, if you get the chance. Marvelous Mistress! It's rare to see you outside the Den of Mysteries. What brings you here? As you see, there's plenty of dialogue options you can respond with. Let's say I'm tracking down a mystery. Ooh, maybe I can help. That is, if you don't mind having me for a partner. We are natural rivals, after all. You're a mistress of mystery, with tons of secrets to hide. And as the inspector, I uncover secrets, and I'm always poking around. Now let's go ahead and say to her, inspect away, I have nothing to hide. Oh, good. Sometimes my investigating leads me to people's things, and I go through their stuff. I'm glad you weren't sore about it. It was a really important case. So yeah, that's some things Daphne will say. But anyways, there's also another secret dialogue option you can get with the ally Maul. As some of you may know, Maul is absolutely obsessed with Grognak the Barbarian. And there's actually a secret Grognak dialogue option that you can get with him while you're wearing the Grognak outfit that you can purchase from the Atomic Shop. You human, are you Grognak? 
As you can see, while wearing the Grognak outfit, you can get the Grognak dialogue option with him that says, what, you think I wear this outfit for fun? And here's how Maul responds to this. Hmm, this true. You do wear rags like King Grognak. Very shiny, like unstoppable board game Grognak. But you puny, more like classic first edition Grognak. Maul not sure. So yeah, that's something Maul will say if you're dressed up as Grognak the Barbarian. Anyways, there's some more unique dialogue that I know of that you can trigger from Steven Scarberry, the ally who worships the Mothman. In case you don't know, if you're wearing the cultist enlightened robes, he'll actually speak negatively about them. Check this out. I hope you're only wearing that because your other clothes are dirty with albino radstag blood. I appreciate your enthusiasm for Mothman, but you're going about it all wrong. So yeah, he does not like the enlightened cultist. But that's just one of the hidden unique dialogues that you can get from Stephen Scarberry. He has many more. Such as, for instance, if you're wearing the cultist adept clothes, he actually reacts positively toward them. Check this out. Good choice in apparel. Though be careful where you adorn the twigs. They can irritate. I see you have come to appreciate fine vestments. And same with the cultist neophyte clothes. He reacts positively over them as well. Good choice in apparel. Though be careful where you adorn the twigs. They can irritate. I see you have come to appreciate fine vestments. For some reason, he does not like the enlightened cultists. Some other unique dialogue that you might have missed from him is when the Mothman Equinox event is around. As some of you may know, this is a limited time event that comes around sometimes in the game. And when it is actually in Fallout 76, he'll have this to say. What a blessed time. The Holy Mothman Equinox. Let me know if you catch his gaze. I hope you are having a blessed Mothman Equinox. Yeah, he actually comments about the Mothman Equinox being around. Pretty awesome. But that's not all. This ally has even more secret dialogue that you might have missed with them. If you choose the dialogue option that says, I have stories from the wasteland, this will lead to a bunch of secret dialogue that you can get with them, depending on whether or not you completed these certain things. Like, for instance, the first one here that states the lowdown in brackets, that's the quest you have to complete in order to get this dialogue option available with him, which this quest is a part of the Sheep Squatch questline. As you can see, this one states, I investigated the disappearance of a man who was apparently eaten by a Sheep Squatch. And yeah, here's what he says over this dialogue option. Ah, uh, yes. I've seen posters telling the power of these Squatches. What did you find? So once you choose that, as you can see, you'll have even more dialogue options to choose from. This ally has a lot of dialogue, which I think is awesome. The developers took that much time with this guy. But yeah, let's just go ahead and respond with the top one here that states, he created a robot that thought it was a sheep. I think it killed him. Ah, hubris. We have a story about a moth that flew too close to the sun and burned their wings. It seems he had the same outcome with false gods. So yeah, that's what he says over that. And by the way, in case you don't know how to do the Sheep Squatch quest line, all you gotta do to start it is go to any train station, and then head up to the billboard that's inside the train station. And as you can see, you can find a poster on the billboard that states the Sheep Squatch ate my brother. Just read this and this will begin the Sheep Squatch quest line, which the lowdown is a part of this quest line. So yeah, that's how you can experience that quest to unlock the dialogue option with Steven. But yeah, anyways, the next secret dialogue that you can get is Over and Out, which this quest is a part of the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. Once you complete the Over and Out, you unlock this dialogue option here with him. As you can see, it states, I've actually come across a Mothman while exploring an underground bunker. And yeah, here's what he says to that. You have? Well, tell me more. Have you seen the secrets of his gaze? So yeah, once he says that, you'll have more options to choose from, which during the over and out quest, you do go inside the Enclave Research Facility and you encounter a Scorched Mothman, which is very rare to encounter. But yeah, as you can see, one of the dialogue options you could say, it seems to have been infected with some form of the Scorched virus. I had to put it down. And here's what he says over that. Sick. 
Oh, no, no, no. The dust from the Mothman's wings prevents sickness and extends the life of those it blesses. This must have been some form of mutated butterfly man. Pretty interesting. He doesn't believe you. But yeah, you do encounter a Scorched Mothman during this quest. Anyways, in case you don't know how to start the Brotherhood of Steel questline, you just have to head over to Fort Atlas, which is located right here on the map. Head over here and just go inside the building and... Yeah, you could start the quest line inside here by talking to Night Shin. So yeah, anyways, this next hidden dialogue option that you can unlock is the one that requires you to complete the Death and Taxidermy quest. Once you complete it, you can say, Have you heard of the Beast of Beckley? It's another cryptid in the region. And here's what Steven says over this one. It is not in the Book of False Gods. Do tell. Once you say that to him, you can now say, A group of cryptid hunters were brutally killed by a large white wolf. And here's what he says over that. That's borderline blasphemy. There's no way an albino wolf is anywhere near the same pantheon as his holiness. That said, Brother Ryan had made mention of a white fox. Perhaps this is what he was alluding to. I must investigate. Maybe this blood could serve as an alternative to the albino rat stacks. So yeah, that's what he says over that dialogue option. And you do go against the Beast of Beckley and the Cryptid's pups during this quest. And in case you don't know how to start it, all you have to do is head over to Lewisburg train station and then go up to the poster board in here and read the note that states missing the Problos. After reading this, you'll start the death and taxidermy quest, which it's a pretty neat little quest to check out. Anyways, you can unlock another hidden dialogue option with him by completing the limited time event called Mothman Equinox. Once you complete this event that comes around in the game for a limited time, you will be able to say this to him. I performed a ritual to summon the Mothman. And here's what he says over that. You had. I must know more. How did a non-believer learn and successfully accomplish the ritual? Once you say that, now you can say, Interpreter Clarence walked me through the steps of the ritual. Here's what he says over saying this to him. Oh, my apologies. I didn't realize that we were discussing the false prophet. When people say Mothman, I assume they're talking about the holy Mothman, not that purple liar. Please, do go on. Tell me of the stories of their glorified butterfly. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. He calls Interpreter Clarence a false prophet, and the Mothman he summons a glorified butterfly. But uh, yeah, anyways, now we have a couple dialogue options we can choose to say to him. I'll just go ahead and choose this one that says, Say what you want, but they were able to summon Mothman. Should I be impressed that they summoned the wrong thing? I can summon a stray dog with a piece of meat. That does not make it a holy being. <laughs> yeah, he does not believe Interpreter Clarence actually summoned the real Mothman. This makes me wonder if Interpreter Clarence is a huge false prophet and Stephen Scarberry actually knows the truth and what the real Mothman looks like. But yeah, here's something else that you might have missed that he can say. What is this? A lilac glow? Surely you are not walking under the light of the false prophet. Yeah, he only says this if you have the bonus effect that the wise mothman can give you. Which you can get a wise mothman bonus effect from completing the path to enlightenment public event. You get to interact with a wise mothman at the end of this event to get a bonus effect. Or if you complete the mothman equinox limited time public event, the wise mothman will also appear at the end of this one. And if you interact with it, you also get a wise mothman bonus effect from it. However, the bonus effect that you can get from the wise mothman from the mothman equinox limited time event gives you more experience than the one that you get for interacting with the wise mothman at the end of the path to enlightenment public event. Either way, if you get any of these and go and interact with the ally Stephen Scarberry, sometimes he'll comment about you interacting with the wise mothman, except he calls the wise mothman the false prophet. He doesn't like that you've interacted with it. Anyways, lastly up on this video, before I show you all the bonus easter egg, is over how to enter Vault 51. And I'm also going to be showing you all some secrets that are within this place too. So, in case you don't know, Vault 51 is located up here from Vault 76, in the middle of nowhere. And when you're over here, there's actually a secret button that you can press to open up this vault. You can find the secret button over here inside this trailer, as you can see. The button will be at the end of this trailer here, along with some dead vault dwellers. Anyways, once you press the button, that will then open up the vault door, 
as you can see. It's opening up now. And yeah, we can now officially go on inside. Pretty freaking awesome. Alright, so anyways, inside here, there's actually a few hidden key cards around to discover to be able to fully explore this place. So I'm going to be showing you all where those are located at in here. There's also plenty of lore that you can find around in here, such as you can find some holotapes around and read some terminals to learn more about what went down here. There's also plenty of loot that you can scavenge too in here, and some you may even want to bring back to your camp and use the loot as decorations, such as this working desk fan here. This is a great item to put on display at your camp. But uh, yeah, not only that, there's also a mini boss fight that we can take on in here too, with plenty of other enemies as well for even more experience. I gotta say, the mini boss fight is unique. It will definitely remind you of Nuclear Winter. Heck, what am I saying? Traversing through this place in general will remind you of Nuclear Winter. This was the waiting lobby after all. For those of you that might not know, this is where we waited at before the Nuclear Winter match started. I had some good times during that game mode. But yeah, anyways, the first hidden key card that we could find in here will be located in the atrium on the second floor. Up here, you just want to head into the laundry room, which is located right here, and it will be locked, but don't worry, it's a skill zero lock, so yeah, it's pretty easy to bypass. Anyways, once you're inside here, you can find the key card on top of the dryer over here. As you can see, it blends well with the lighting in here. It can be kind of difficult to see. Once you got this, you just want to head this way over to this door and use the key card on this ID card reader. This will lead you to the next hidden key card, which will be located right here on this table. Anyways, once you got this key card, you'll then just want to head this way through this door and then head down these stairs and go through this door by pressing this button. And you can find the next door that you'll need to unlock right here. Just go ahead and use the key card on this ID card reader to unlock the door. And you can find the next key card in here located right on this desk. There will also be a hollow tape as well that you can play if you want to once again learn more about the backstory of what went down here but for the sake of time for this video I'm not going to be going over all of the lore but anyways once you got this key card you'll then just want to head this way and head back to the atrium which the atrium is located this way right through these doors anyways once you're back here you'll then just want to use the key card on this ID card reader here to unlock this door and you can find the final key card inside this room it'll be located right here so yeah go ahead and grab this this is the overseer key card which is the mini boss within this vault I gotta say it's pretty cool how the developers added this mini boss for us to take on but yeah you can find the overseer room by heading up here it'll be located through this door up here just go ahead and use the key card on the ID card reader here and that'll open up the overseer room so yeah, once you're up here, you can find plenty of loot to scavenge around in this area. And there will also be some lore that you can explore inside this area too. But if you want to find the mini boss fight, you'll just want to head this way through this door. And once in here, you'll come across some enemies. So we'll go ahead and take these guys out. But yeah, once you go through this door, this is where you'll find the mini boss fight. And the boss is wearing power armor with Hellfire prototype paint, which we got this paint job by reaching Overseer rank 100 in Nuclear Winter, which was the max rank in the game mode. Yeah, it's pretty neat how the developers added this within Vault 51. After all, this was the waiting lobby once again for the Nuclear Winter game mode. And fun fact, in case you don't know, Bethesda actually made this vault accessible for us to explore around when they removed Nuclear Winter from Fallout 76. But yeah, pretty cool to see the Overseer in here wearing power armor that has the Hellfire prototype paint job on it. But anyways, not only is there a mini boss fight to take on within this area, you can also find a trunk right here that you can loot, and there will also be some more lore over this place too as you can see you can read the overseers terminal here and there's also terminals over here which these are Zach's terminals and one more thing that's good to know about within this vault that I wanted to show you all before moving on from this secret is if you head back to the atrium and then head over here through this door this will lead to the stage here and yeah, from this stage room, if you head this way and then head this way, you can find tons of instruments. You can find some snare drums at the bottom of this shelf. You can find some violins on the shelf, some violin bows, some trumpets, some flutes. There's even an acoustic guitar over here on the side. And there's some accordions up here, higher up on the shelf. And there's even a steel guitar here 
as well laying up against the wall. There are loads of instruments in here that you can scavenge. You can break them down into junk or you could use them for decorations by displaying them on display cases at your camp. And keep in mind, not all of these instruments can go on a display case. You can't display the acoustic guitar, the steel guitar, or the accordion yet. Don't know, but that's the plans on changing that. Either way, figured some people, especially ones who love music, would like to put some of these instruments on display in their camp. So, yeah, figured I would share this room within this vault before I completely wrap up this secret. Feel free to explore around this place for yourself. There's loads of things to find. So now I just want to thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Once again, this took a long time to compile all of this into one video. As a thank you for watching it to the end, I wanted to throw an extra Easter egg into the video. This one is a sneaky Fallout 4 Easter egg you can discover at the Riverside Manor. Inside the building here, if you head upstairs, you can find a terminal within this room. And on this terminal, if you go to fan mail and then choose the subject that states I have raw continuity issues, you'll find out that this is actually a complaint that was sent to Miss Rivers from Kent Connolly over the Mistress of Mystery. In case you don't know who Kent Connolly is, he is a huge fan of the Silver Shroud and Mistress of Mystery. He's actually responsible for the operation of the Silver Shroud radio signal. There's a whole quest line that involves him in Fallout 4. Pretty neat to see a little reference of him in Fallout 76. But yeah, that's about wrapping up this video now. I decided to jam pack this with loads of good secrets and Easter eggs, and I also tried to be as informative as I could be over each one. Hope you all found this enjoyable. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.